Podcasting from Astor Place, New York City, New York. This is the Brooklyn Baritone Podcast. Good morning, everyone. Well, it's usually morning when I'm recording these podcasts and productions, but whenever you choose to join me, Morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime, late at night, it doesn't matter. I appreciate the likes, the looks, the listens, and of course, I'd appreciate you hitting the subscribe and notification bell on my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Baritone. But of course, do that if you want to. No pressure. Though I would like the algorithm to swing in my direction. We really think about the collateral damage that anxiety causes. Because there's definitely damage and pieces to be swept up and put back together if things can be put back together. Because we had what people call knee-jerk reactions to many situations in our lives. We have to go forward with clarity, intelligence, logic. And unfortunately, especially with many recent incidents globally, we see that logic is just thrown out the window. We follow the crowd follow the crowd because we feel it's the safety that is consistently promoted and broadcast to us it's like me knowing i'm gonna be hungry if i go when i go to work tomorrow and not preparing i just jump up like oh i gotta hurry up and go to work and fly out the door not making sure oh do i have my debit card which i usually do do i have money on me which i usually do or I can say, let me prepare something the night before so I can take it with me because I know chances are I'm going to want to eat. Let me make sure I want to eat. Let me not let that knee jerk reaction to pop up and fly out the door just to get to work on time cause me to not eat. You know, that's not really a major problem, but it's just one very small instance of panic and anxiety ruining things in the future because what you do now affects the future. Your words and your actions. Now, going to a much more broader incident. It's now 2022 as I'm recording this. Back in 2020, at the height of the hysteria of the pandemic scramble. Two words. Toilet paper. I still don't understand. I still don't understand the hysteria behind people hoarding toilet paper. And the crazy thing is that people were out there getting toilet paper like like a bunch of mad people. Meanwhile, dried goods and canned goods were fully stocked. I don't know. My synopsis on this, my theory is that um, it's possible. Maybe at that time when everything was starting, people just kind of had the mindset to want to stock up. Somebody innocently probably had to go get a lot of toilet paper because... We're getting it from that, that household and like their cousin called them. Hey, while you're down there, get me a roll, get me a pack too. And then they were like, oh, wait a second. Nancy, our neighbor, said she wanted to. She actually gave us money for it. So they probably got their big mega roll, mega roll for their cousin and mega roll for Nancy, their neighbor. So someone or some people probably saw, wait a second, they're stocking up. Well, let's go grab two, three, four for ourselves too. And then when other people saw those people with their carts and a whole bunch of toilet paper, hey, people are starting to stock up with toilet paper. There must be a shortage. Let's go. Let's go, guys, and get toilet paper. And it probably spread like wildfire like that. That's only my opinion of what probably could have happened. Who knows what happened with that? But again, panic causes so much problems and causes to act so irrational. Now let's go for something with a bigger scope. Going back a little further, three letters for you people who were around for this. Y2K. Now, for everyone who knew about this Y2K, it was advertised and it was a social thing where so much people thought that the world was going to come at a cataclysmic, catastrophic end. Everything was going to blow up and shut down. People thought that computers, for whatever reason, computers and automated systems could not calculate past the year 1999. So as soon as to the year 2000 midnight hit, people thought that computer systems were going going to shut down. Bank accounts locked up. Planes are going to drop out the sky. Cars are going to stop driving. I mean, people, these are computers. It's just another set of numbers for these devices. Just to have a little bit more insight. 
the amount of money that was used up, basically wasted, wasted as a response to for remediation or to prep for Y2K it was around 100 to probably 600 billion dollars. That's a lot of blasted money that people used to scramble around because they thought year 2000 was it. For people don't use rationale. People don't use logic. We could see that now with the response with so much things right now how people run out because it's a scare behind it. We were not made in fear. That is a tactic of the adversary, man. You see the problems that we cause now, and then the problem is when so much people react with anxiety and fear and panic, it causes a stress for those people. I keep telling people that anxiety and fear breaks down your immune system, breaks you down spiritually, and then that, of course, is going to break you down physically. You will be your own worst enemy because you decide to panic for everything because you don't have a clear level head take a step back and breathe and take a look at the bigger picture breathe again i'm just using these two or three quick analogies stop using stop allowing allowing panic to rule you because it causes a lot of monetary loss loss of man hours it makes you lose peace of mind it doesn't allow you to keep a clear path in front of you. And then now we have to utilize man hours, utilize man hours to pick up the pieces when we could have been using that to thrive and do better things. Keep a clear head. Stop using panic as a way of life. Don't allow these people to rule you with these things. Don't deal with the collateral damage that panic causes. Anyways, that's all I have for today. I think my camera telling me it's time to go. If you want to catch more of my content you can go to my website at brooklynbaritone.com you could also catch more of my content video content on my youtube channel brooklyn baritone i'm also found on linkedin under Corey ashley you can find me on instagram and or facebook the audio versions of these podcasts can be found on google podcasts itunes podcasts amazon music on the podcast and many other podcast platforms I also broadcast on local Brooklyn cable television four times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Verizon, Optimum, RCN, and Spectrum. Anyway, that's all I got. Thank you guys for listening. I want you guys to walk good, be blessed. Don't panic. Be cool. Be cool. You hear from me next week. I'm out.